Welcome, I'm Lee Cowan, and this is Here Comes the Sun, a closer look at some of the people, places, and things we bring you every weekend on Sunday morning. A world-renowned virtuoso of dance, Mikhail Baryshnikov has recently stepped out of his comfort zone to speak out as a dissonant voice against Russian President Vladimir Putin and the war in Ukraine. In 1974, while touring with the Bolshoi Ballet in Toronto, Baryshnikov slipped away. Where is, is Mr. Baryshnikov now? He is in Canada. <laughs> Days after his defection, he appeared at a dance studio in Toronto. He wouldn't discuss his defection with newspeople today, and he wouldn't attend a news conference after his short exhibition. You've tried not to be political over the years, mm -hmm. but you've made a point now with what's happening in Ukraine to say something. I, I couldn't stay silent this time. There's more from Anthony Mason's conversation with Mikhail Baryshnikov coming up a little later in the show. How hard was it for you to leave? It was easier than uh, uh, Ukrainian refugees living yes. at uh, Kiev and uh, or Kharkiv or uh, in yes. America or uh, yeah. anywhere. And uh, that's uh, for me to say how difficult is just immoral. Uh, it was the, in fact, easiest decision because it was a necessary decision. Mm -hmm. Necessary in what way? Because the return back to that country which was the, uh, on the bottom of uh, a dictatorship of Brezhnev. It was a very dark times. Then David Pogue meets up with the creators of Marcel the Shell, a tiny character that's hugely adorable. Comedian, actor, and author Jenny Slate has voiced plenty of animated characters, but she considers Marcel the Shell her finest creation. Guess what I do for adventure? What? I hang glide on a Dorito. Guess what I use as a pen? What? I use the, a pen, but it takes the whole family. Inevitably, Hollywood came a-calling with big Hollywood ideas. That's all coming up right here on Here Comes the Sun. He's an icon on stage and a champion of the arts offstage. But as Anthony Mason learned, Mikhail Baryshnikov has oftentimes been reluctant to enter the political fray. That is, until now. In a new adaptation of The Cherry Orchard at the Baryshnikov Art Center in New York, the center's namesake is playing an old servant. Three degrees below zero and the cherry blossoms all in bloom. I'm almost 75 and I'm playing 85 years old. You know? <laughs> okay. <laughs> the white hair is for his character named Fears. It's bleached, you know. <laughs> it's not mine yet. <laughs> One of the world's most acclaimed dancers, Mikhail Baryshnikov, has worked only occasionally as an actor most notably an Oscar-nominated performance in the 1977 film, The Turning Point. Are you gonna be all right? Don't worry about him, he'll be all right. I have a little secret for you. You know, I think it's perfectly all right to be nervous. And then a uh, quarter of a pounder with cheese. And playing uh, Carrie Bradshaw's nuggets. Russian boyfriend on that? Sex and the City. Can you handle it? Absolutely. But he learned from some of the best. James Cagney, he was a good friend of mine. And he always thought, I said, James, how you play? I said, listen what the person is telling you. And then they tell him back the truth. And if you're not dumb, you observe. <laughs> he has a cert, some sort of a light that, that, or some sort of a presence that uh, is extremely unique. So what's that like as a director? There's no way to control it. <laughs> Ukrainian-born Igor Golyak is directing the Soviet-born actor in this Russian classic. Baryshnikov has another role as playwright Anton Chekhov in the virtual production. In Chekhov's play, the matriarch of a family, played by Jessica Hecht, faces financial troubles and has to face selling their beloved orchard. If the estate is sold, 
It doesn't matter. I must look truth straight in the eye. The What's orchard, in the bigger sense of the word, one of the characters says, all of Russia is our orchard. It's very relatable right now. There's a complete loss of Russia right now. As Golyak was planning the production, Russia invaded Ukraine. His family had left Kiev for Boston back in 1990, when he was just 11. But when this war started, you know, something in the stomach started, like, twisting. And it just hurts. How has it been for you to watch what's happening in Ukraine? Uh, horrific. Uh, just now we have a, yeah. uh, shivers, you know, about it. Baryshnikov made headlines around the world when he defected from the Soviet Union in 1974. Does it seem a long time ago? <laughs> no, it's been so, it's been very fast. Yeah. Unfortunately. <laughs> you never wanted to go back to Russia. No, somehow, maybe instinctively, I knew that one day something like that would happen. In his Soviet years, as a principal dancer with the Kirov Ballet, Baryshnikov was privileged to travel, but he was watched. You were usually followed by KGB agents when you went, yes? Yes, but they were guys who were a couple of guys always you knew them by the names you know yeah. and uh, sometimes we have a coffee with them you know yeah. uh, it was like yeah. okay we had the nicknames for them you know, <laughs> <laughs> you know it's just like, so it wasn't that intimidating you know, it was this, uh, of course they have a yeah. many different faces yes. you know. but in 1974 while touring with the bolshoi ballet in toronto Baryshnikov slipped away. Where is Mr. Baryshnikov now? He is in Canada. <laughs> Days after his defection, he appeared at a dance studio in Toronto. He wouldn't discuss his defection with newspeople today, and he wouldn't attend a news conference after his short exhibition. You've tried not to be political over the years. Mm -hmm. But you've made a point now with what's happening in Ukraine to say something. I, I couldn't stay silent this time. I was born in Soviet, that time, Soviet Latvia, in the family of military officer. His father, a Soviet colonel, was a Stalinist. It was his mother who introduced him to the arts in Riga, the Latvian capital. At age six or seven, the first time I, my mother took me to see ballet and it's an orchestra playing and this beautiful theater and it's got me got me <laughs> in 2017 Baryshnikov was given Latvian citizenship it means something and my mother is buried there and that's why back to your question about why now that idea that um, I would say Russian tanks would go again uh, to Baltics. You're afraid for Latvia? I'm afraid for uh, all that part of the world, and uh, because I am part of it. Recently, he co-founded the charity True Russia to raise money for Ukrainian refugees. When Russia banned its website earlier this month, Baryshnikov addressed an open letter to President Putin. Your Russian world, the world of fear, he wrote, will not live on as long as there are people like us. What did you think when Putin said Russians who support the West are scum and traitors? You know, this is disgusting. Do you think of this as Russia's war or Putin's war? It is Putin's war. He's trying to create new history of Russia. He, he does not care about people at all. Although how it's possible, he has a kids himself. You know, how it's possible. Russians who speak out against him have a way of kind of disappearing. Listen, I, I, I will be 75 years old. What I have to lose? <laughs> My old master, that will be your grandfather. As he performs in the orchard, Mikhail Baryshnikov says the role of the arts is to inspire and engage. It's an oxygen. And his most important job is here at the art center that bears his name. Why is it the most important job? It's a social service. 
I've been honored to make my home in New York. I, I love this country with all craziness, mm. but there is nothing better than uh, be a free man and living with your family in free society and uh, in this extraordinary city. More from Anthony Mason's conversation with Mikhail Baryshnikov coming up in just a few minutes. But first, this is no empty shell. My name is Marcel, and I'm partially a shell, as you can see on my body, but I also have shoes and um, a face, so. In fact, what's inside has captivated audiences worldwide. Talk on the phone. Sure. Hello, this is me. What? Leslie Stahl has many fans, and these days, that includes Marcel the Shell, a delightful animated character. Our David Pogue dives in. There are plenty of big movies. But the highest rated one of all is very, very small. My name is Marcel, and I'm partially... The main shell, character is no bigger than a body, quarter. I also have shoes and um, a face. He has this sort of granite dignity, but he's so tiny. I, well, I used to have a sister. And I think that there is a lot of humor in watching something be the wrong size. Comedian, actor, and author Jenny Slate has voiced plenty of animated characters, but she considers Marcel the Shell her finest creation. Guess what I do for adventure? I hang glide on a Dorito. Guess what I use as a pen? What? I use the, a pen, but it takes the whole family. Slate had never produced that distinctive voice until one night in 2010. To save money attending a wedding, she was sharing one hotel room with five friends. It was so crowded in there, and I just felt tiny, and all of a sudden I just started saying like, it's, it's just like, I like can hardly move. I, I can't move around. Her boyfriend, filmmaker Dean Fleischer Camp, loved the new little character voice and decided to feature it in a short video. Do you want to see me talk on the phone? I knew I wanted to make an animated short and sort of something I hadn't experimented with before. Hello, this is me. He went to a toy store and the art supply store and got a bunch of googly eyes, got the shells. The three minute short was a huge hit online. One time I nibbled on a piece of cheese and my cholesterol went up to 900. In the next few years, the couple made two more Marcel videos, racking up 48 million views and counting, published two Marcel books, and got married. Ooh, baby, baby. Ooh, baby. I've seen people kiss on television. Inevitably, Hollywood came a-calling with big Hollywood ideas. Someone even recommended that we pair him with Ryan Reynolds and they fight crime together, which <laughs> it's not a movie I wouldn't see. Finally, Camp and Slate found backers who'd give them full control. But to fill 90 minutes, they'd have to expand Marcel's emotional range, fill in his backstory, and introduce new characters. Did anyone ever say, you know, whoa, 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 that's tugging what made the short special too much? I think that part of that was in always gut checking ourselves against the original and making sure, does it still have that sort of, you know, electricity that was so great about the shorts? One of those new characters is Marcel's grandmother, played by Isabella Rossellini. In the movie, they watch 60 Minutes together every Sunday night. We love it. We just call it the show. That's how much we love it. Leslie. Who's Leslie? Leslie Shaw. She likes Leslie Stahl. I'm Leslie Stahl. She blows cases wide open. This movie has elevated me in the eyes of my grandchildren. Nana, make the noise. Tick, 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 tick. They've seen me on 60 Minutes and I'm nothing. <laughs> but with Marcel, this is huge in my family. Fortunately for the filmmakers, the real Leslie Stahl agreed to take the role. They wanted me to play it 100% straight. So they hired a 60 Minutes crew, a 60 Minutes producer, 
came along to produce the segment. And I think it does look like a 60 minute story when you see it. Marcel, a one inch tall shell, reminds us of the true value of community. Does it make you inclined to look fondly upon the next movie proposal that comes your way? Well, let me just say this. I'm available. <laughs> Here I am, movie star. <laughs> Dean Fleischer Camp is in the movie too, as the off-screen voice of the filmmaker. Well, mostly off-screen. So, do you have any plans tonight? No. I am playing a version of myself that doesn't exist anymore. <laughs> Yeah. And I'm glad I'm not that person anymore. The movie wound up taking seven years to make Hello, my name because the filmmakers is. had to make it four times. First, as a complete audio soundtrack. They're making me blush. <laughs> the second version added storyboards. They're making me blush. <laughs> for the third pass, they filmed the empty backgrounds for the entire movie without Marcel. They're making me blush. <laughs> Finally, the team animated the tiny Marcel puppet one frame at a time and added him into the backgrounds. They're making me blush. <laughs> In the end, the marriage of Marcel's creators didn't survive. But their collaboration, a movie about a bald, armless, one-eyed shell on a quest to find his family. Do you think they could be out there? If that movie works at all, is crazy. Yeah, I mean, of course that's a huge risk to take. And yet, I love it when people comment on it and they say, I can't believe I was bawling my eyes out at this little shell with googly eyes. It makes people feel like I'm a little guy, like feelings, you know, wanting to be loved for your, for your own dear smallness in this gigantic, weird, cosmic scheme that we're in. Uh, the role of Fierce is uh, kind of a uh, small, but uh, one of the most important roles yeah. in Cherry Orchard, you know. Like. After the break, more from Mikhail Baryshnikov. Stay with us. A, a, a barometer of uh, ethics, yeah. although extremely conservative. Welcome back. As promised, here's more from Anthony Mason with Mikhail Baryshnikov. Let's talk about this play. What made you want to be part of the Cherry Orchard again? Uh, Igor Galiak uh, offered me the role of Fierce, uh, the old servant, 85 years old. Yeah. And as you know, uh, uh, virtually, uh, in virtual performance, I play Anton Chekhov, yes. uh, the playwright. The role of Fierce, it's uh, kind of a uh, uh, small, but uh, one of the most important roles yeah. in Cherry Orchard, you know. He's a, a barometer of uh, ethics, yeah. although extremely conservative yeah. uh, and loyal and uh, interesting, mysterious character, kind right. of. And a lot of actors tried and then successfully or they're less successfully, but they played in many different ways, you know, this mm -hmm. character. And I just couldn't, uh, couldn't pass, pass this opportunity. Mm -hmm. In the virtual production, did you enjoy playing Chekhov? Very much so. Well, I am playing in Russian, you know, Chekhov, because it, I think uh, it's always a pleasure, because uh, slip of a tongue, I can't really find a, a, a word. Uh, immediately in mother, my mother tongue <laughs> and in the English I am uh, you know sometimes when I'm off I am really off. <laughs> <laughs> Even you struggle with Russian now? Of course. Yeah. Do you speak uh, much Russian anymore? Uh, yes. You yes, do? I yeah. do. And I read a lot in Russian of course yeah. and then I, I have few friends in, in Europe and yeah. uh, of my uh, ex uh, compatriots. Yeah, I know my, my wife who was, is fluent in Russian and was a translator actually for a while. Mm -hmm. She, I mean, because she doesn't practice as much anymore, she gets very angry when she can't find a word. Yeah, people, some of my friends say, well, you know, you have an American accent, you know, are you kidding? But the uh, language changes, you, yeah, know, I've, right. uh, you know, I've left almost 50 years ago. It will be in a couple of years, 50 
years. Yeah. How hard was it for you to leave? It was easier than uh, uh, Ukrainian refugees living yes. at uh, Kiev and uh, or Kharkiv or uh, in yes. America or uh, yeah. anywhere. And uh, that's uh, for me to say how difficult it is just immoral. Uh, it was the, in fact, easiest decision because it was a uh, necessary decision. Mm -hmm. Necessary in what way? Because the return back to that country which was the, uh, on the bottom of uh, a dictatorship of Brezhnev. It was a very dark times uh, for uh, any creativity, yeah. uh, any uh, did you feel, did you feel thought. Did you feel artistically suffocated? Not really. I had a a leading position. I was a principal dancer yeah. at, at one of the most extraordinary theater in the world, the Mariinsky Theater. Mm -hmm. Kirov used to be, uh, yeah. and uh, had a carte blanche to do whatever uh, uh, I want to do. In fact, mm -hmm. but there was nothing to do. There was no new work, uh, and the interesting new work uh, situation, of course. Uh, in the West was opposite. It's everything mm. was blooming after yeah. the uh, after the sixties. Was it hard to leave your family when you left? You weren't that close to your father. I, I didn't have the family. I uh, at that time I was single. Uh, my father had a, a different family. My mother yeah. died when I was twelve years old, and I was I lived with my father for. Uh, three, four years, and then I left for good. I mean, uh, and I never had a really uh, close relationship to my father. Yeah. So did you even tell him you were going? No. no. Did they try to make you come back then? Oh, well, yes, they tried to uh, uh, return my Soviet passport, and I refused, you know, things yeah. like that. You know, it, like I said, no, this decision is irreversible. You know. You've chosen your acting roles carefully and kind of sporadically. It's, yeah. it's not something you go into regularly. You have another job. This is my job. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, this studio where we sit right now, no. that's my, the most important job, uh, the mission. I'm Lee Cowan. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you here next time on Here Comes the Sun.